The intermittent the fasting is incredibly easy and effective. All you do is not eat. But there are still some common mistakes people make with intermittent fasting. This video talks about the 9 biggest mistakes of intermittent fasting people make and how to avoid them. Number 1. Don't become dependent of coffee. Caffeine is an incredible appetite suppressant and it's going to prevent hunger for several hours. It increases your focus and energy. At the same time, it can turn into a powerful drug. As in the case of insulin, the more you release it, the more resistant your cells become to it. The same applies to caffeine. The more you drink coffee, the less of an effect caffeine has on you and you need to drink more. That's why you want to remain sensitive to coffee. You shouldn't drink any more than 2 to 4 cups of coffee a day and you shouldn't feel the need to either. When you're in ketosis, you already have a ton of energy and caffeine is just a nice thing to have. Coffee is actually very healthy for you, but I'm always aware and mindful of how much caffeine I'm consuming. This drink, I like it. Another Another great way to remain sensitive to caffeine is to cycle between decaf and regular coffee. One day on, one day off. Or you drink caffeinated coffee for a week and then you drink only decaf for a few days. Number two, don't get dehydrated. Instead, we should increase our water intake. Drinking eight cups of water a day isn't enough, especially while we're fasting. Coffee can also be a diuretic that will make you urinate out a lot of water and electrolytes. To compensate that, add a pinch of sea salt to your water. This will improve fluid absorption and improve electrolyte balance. You have to stay hydrated throughout the day to get most absorption. Number 3. Don't think you'll die. You won't lose muscle, you won't gain fat, you won't damage your health for fasting just 16 to 20 hours. The opposite actually happens. Short term caloric deprivation actually stimulates the body's own inner mechanisms that rejuvenate and clean your entire organism such as autophagy. Fasting doesn't equal starvation either because your body has access to nutrients. If you think that you're gonna create some damage to your body and health by doing some intermittent fasting then you might because you're creating this extra stress with your mind. Extra stress that isn't actually real. Number 4. Don't be afraid of hunger. Fasting allows you to reconceptualize hunger. It makes you more in tune with your body and discover why do you desire certain foods and at what time. Most of the time it has nothing to do with needing calories for survival but it's simply a habit. A habitual response that happens specifically at certain times of the day because you're used to having food at that time. Don't bring in too many stressors. Fasting causes hormesis. It's a stressor to the body that needs to be taken in the right dose for it to have a positive response. You gain all the benefits after the stimulus kicks in and you recover from it. If you're fasting every day for maybe 20 hours, then you need to be mindful of what other types of stressors do you experience, like physical training, work stress, relationships, anxiety, fear, getting stuck in traffic, all those things stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system stimulates the adrenal glands and makes them pump out more adrenaline and glucose. If the adrenal glands can't handle that much stress, then eventually they'll burn out. Additional stressors include lack of sleep. The most growth hormone actually gets released during the first few hours of sleep. Sleep deprivation also lowers testosterone and can cause insulin resistance. Most of the adaptations of hormesis on your body happen during sleep, so you don't want to miss out on it. Don't freeze to death. Another mistake would be to get too cold. Cold exposure is a stress response like any other. If you're fasting then you might feel slightly colder than you normally would. It's a sign that your body is working hard to produce heat. So to avoid that you can dress more warmly or drink some hot beverages. Another. Don't fast for too long. You need to also be mindful of how well you can handle intermittent fasting. Don't jump right into it if your body isn't used to it. Start off with maybe 14 hours, 16, 18 and then move on with your first 24 hour fast. Don't gorge after fasting. Intermittent fasting is a great way to cause a caloric deficit that's maybe going to help you burn some fat. Because you'll be eating less often, your meals will be larger. This can also mean that you can eat some junk food while still maintaining a negative energy balance. It may work but it's still not optimal for overall health. Of course you can apply the 80-20 rule and occasionally have some indulgences. But at the same time you need to ask yourself what are you trying to do with nutrition? Is food just calories in calories out? Or is it a way to improve your health and empower your energy? The last mistake is don't ignore the signs and soldier through. The positive effects of hormesis 
only occur with the right dosage. If you take it too far, then you may actually cause more harm than good. Some signs of too much fasting are constant headaches, fatigue, feeling like being hit with a club, not sleeping well, shivering even though you have tons of clothes on, problems with gallstones and muscle loss. Be mindful of how your body reacts to fasting and gradually improve your fat adaption. That's why I'm also eating the ketogenic diet because it mimics the physiology of fasting a lot. I'm constantly burning my own fat for fuel. My YouTube channel has a ton of videos on both keto and IF and I'll leave a playlist in the description. Thanks for watching, click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Another. My name is Seem, stay fat adapted, stay empowered. Another. Another. Another.